Hi there! Today I'm going to be showing you how to use the Ultimate Retouch Actions. So what I've done here initially to start is I've selected uh, an image I shot of this model, Kathy, um, in Lightroom. I've done my basic adjustments already, so uh, it was slightly overexposed because she was quite close to the flash. Uh, and I did change the white balance a little bit, so just a couple little adjustments that I generally make in, in Lightroom before I open something up to Photoshop. So I've opened it up in Photoshop, and before I ran the action, I, uh, I also duplicated the layer and I used uh, this spot healing tool and I cleaned up any blemishes or uh, any large freckles, any moles, anything like that that uh, wouldn't be cleared up by the skin smoothing action. I flattened the image and then I ran uh, the run the gamut action which gives you all of the actions up here on the side. Now you can run each one individually or run them all at once. It really just depends on your workflow. For, so for today I've I just run them all for you. I'm going to show you how to use them. I like to start at the bottom. I start with the ultimate skin smoothing right away. Uh, I'm going to zoom in here. I've selected a brush. It is, uh, of course, it's white and it's about 250 pixels and the hardness I set at 15 uh, just so that my edges aren't too, too clouded. And uh, I'm just going to take it and I'm going to brush it over. Now I've left the brush at 100% opacity uh, and that's just uh, because I like the, the smoothing to be even. I don't, uh, I don't want to have really, really cloudy edges uh, and I, I want it to be an even coat over the skin. So what I'll do is when I'm finished, I'll change the opacity of the whole layer. Now you'll notice I'm not being too careful about going over the edges. Um, this action does have a layer built in to protect some of the edges. You'll notice uh, in light colored clothing, there's not so much of a bleed, but if you do go over in, uh, in dark images, then or sorry, with dark clothing, then you will have uh, some bleed there. So you're going to want to be more careful. And I'll actually show you. I'm going to go over on purpose over here on this arm where we've got some dark texture. And if I zoom in really closely, you'll see that there is a little bit of uh, dark ghosting there, which I'm just going to take my brush, uh, shrink it down a little bit, and go back over it just to, to clear that ghosting up off the skin. And again, you really only see that with, with darker clothing. Uh, so what I'm going to do is zoom back in on her face and you can see where the skin smoothing has been applied, especially in the nose area. You'll see again, I wasn't too careful about, about not going over those spaces. Uh, you can open this up and you can actually increase the skin smoothing intensity. I've got it set at 40%. I definitely prefer uh, my, my textures to be smoother um, and more realistic rather than than overly smooth like a porcelain doll and uh, that's also why we've added the texture in there so that's another way if you if you really wanted to sm really make the model smooth you can also take that texture off and it makes just a small difference so I'm gonna minimize that and again we can change the opacity of the whole layer nice and evenly. I was pretty happy with it at 75%, so that's where I'm going to leave it. Now the next action that I usually work on is the dodge and burn. So they're in one folder together, and I almost always start with dodge first, and again, I'm gonna select my brush, make sure it's white. Uh, I prefer to work with this a little bit larger, so I'm gonna take it up to about 330, and then the opacity, I put at 15%, because what I'm trying to accomplish here is a smooth kind of feathering. I don't want there to just be a huge chunk of dark. So I'm going to start in the whole area I want to burn and fill it in and then I'm just going to slowly progressively get a little bit smaller and fill it in. Uh, I'm going to do the same, uh, shrink it down and, and get reach the sides of her nose there and again slowly decrease the area that I'm applying it to just to give it that beautiful feathered feeling. Um, because you definitely don't want, want your burning to look too unrealistic there. So I've burned there and if I was doing this whole image, I'd, I'd burn along any shadows that she has uh, just to enhance them slightly. So because that's going to make the model look a little bit thinner. And again, I'm going to go along the shaded part of her arm as well on both sides. Again, I do the same thing to the legs as well. So and then again, just adding a little bit of shadow in there. There we go. So I'm going to turn that off so you can see what it's done. So it's just added a little bit more definition. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the dodge, only I'm going to apply it to the highlights. And uh, there we go, get my brush. So again, I'm working with the brush about 300 pixels and an opacity of 15. And again, I'm just going to go over. I'm going to go uh, down. There we go, her chin. If I'm being very, very detailed, I'm also going to go uh, with a quite small brush. And I'm just going to enhance right here above her lips just a little bit. 
And then of course under her eyes, which I like to use a very large brush for. And just brighten that up. Well, I guess because the angle she's turned at, I'll do it that way. There we go. So just to brighten her up. And then again, I'm going to go down uh, some of the planes where there are some pretty severe highlights already. And again, this just helps the model look a little bit thinner. Uh, in an easy way with a realistic. I, I prefer this action over the actual dodge and burn that Photoshop has included. Uh, it's just a bit more realistic to skin tones and you don't get any of that weird burning. So if we turn the dodge off, that's what the dodge has achieved. And if I close this whole thing up, we can turn it off and turn it on. So it's just a little bit of high-end retouching. Again, if I'm not exactly happy, I can drop the opacity of the whole thing, which is usually what I do. I like it a little bit more subtle. So that's my dodge and burn there. So now that I've handled uh, her skin, I'm going to move on to her eyes. And I have the, oh, sorry, my computer, there we go. I have the ultimate uh, all over eye foundation. Uh, the opacity, I'm going to place at 100%. I'm going to bring my brush size down quite significantly, maybe even smaller than that. And I'm actually going to bring the hardness up to about 50%. And this is going to go all over the eyes. So right in um, all over the whites and actually a little bit over the edges as well because it'll increase uh, the blackness of her her eye makeup as well. I don't do it on uh, the eyelids or anything like that. So it just gives the eyes a little bit of an all over boost. You'll also notice uh, if I turn that off, go back. So it's increasing the color here. It's making the black of the pupils a little bit darker and it's also boosting the whites. And that's it. And again, this is set at 75. We can really boost it up or we can drop it down. Now there's also some sharpening in there. I'm gonna put it back to where it was and carry on. Uh, the next step is the ultimate iris enhance and this goes only on the irises. So again, we're going to get in nice and close here and I'm going to change the size of my brush and then paint just over the irises. There we go. Whoops. There. And I wasn't actually very precise. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to erase anything that I don't, I don't actually want. So there we go. That's uh, that's the ultimate iris enhance. So it just adds a little bit of definition. And again, I see some errors here. There we go. And so pulling back out, uh, because she's got beautiful brown eyes, uh, there's not a whole lot of details, a whole lot of strands in there, but with green and blue eyes, it really does pull them out. And again, you can totally adjust the opacity of that as well. I do like to keep, uh, I do like to keep things subtle, as I've said before. So I'm actually going to drop this to about 65. Uh, with the, I'm actually going to go to the ultimate eyeliner. I'm going to select my white brush. I'm going to zoom in nice and close. Uh, this, uh, this ultimate eyeliner is going to go just around the edges of the eyes. Uh, and I'm going to use quite a small brush for it, uh, around uh, 25, per 25 pixels. And I'm also going to put the hardness to zero. Now the reason I want that is uh, I want this one to be kind of nice, light and fluffy. And I'm just going to draw it on over the eyes, uh, right around the edges. Now, uh, depending on the model's makeup, uh, you, you may not wish to do this stage. It's totally up to you. I like to do it because it really just draws draws a little bit more attention to the eyes. It's quite a subtle action. Uh, we can really boost it up if we want to. Uh, I'm going to leave it about where it was. And uh, the other thing I like to do with this action, with this stage, is actually draw on the pupils a little bit so that they're black. Sometimes, especially working with flash, there's a gray cast to the pupils. So that just cleans it up a little bit. So if we, uh, whoops, if we zoom out here, oh, if we zoom out here, there we go, and turn it off and turn it on. You can see it's a very, very subtle change. And that's kind of what we want. I also have the, the next stage I'm going to do is move on to the ultimate teeth whitening. Uh, again, her teeth are pretty much perfect, but I'm going to show you what it does just so you can see it. Um, again, it's pretty subtle. I don't want anything too extreme. Uh, one of my biggest pet peeves is, is really, really fake, fake looking white teeth. I'll also actually usually run this over uh, the iris, or sorry, not the iris, uh, over the the white part of the eye, uh, just to give it a little bit more of a boost and take out some of the red. So again, if I turn this off, very, very subtle. You can go in and again, adjust adjust the layers. They're set quite low, just so that you do have the versatility to, to really boost it in, in cases where uh, the, the teeth aren't in that great of a shape. The next stage I move on to is the ultimate hair boost. So I'm gonna open that right up and I'm going to take 
quite a large brush, 100% uh, opacity, and uh, whites. And I actually like to leave the hardness for this one as well because I, I'm not always very precise when I go over the hair. And I'm just going to draw over top of the hair. I'm not, again, I'm going over a little bit. I'm not hugely concerned about that. So, again, this is another very subtle action. I'm just going to make my brush size a little bit bigger. There we go. So you see it's pulling out a little bit of color, but it's also pulling out detail and sharpness. So especially when, when hair is curled like this, it really brings out a lot of lovely, lovely detail. It is set quite low. Again, we can boost it up high if we want to. I'll turn it off and turn it on. So it's bringing a little bit more details into the shadows, but especially in the highlights, it's really, really brightening out the highlights. Uh, because this model has kind of uniform colored hair, um, for the most part, uh, when you see a client where they've got brown hair with lots of blonde highlights in it, this is really, really going to make those pop. Uh, I'm going to set this back down to about 60% and leave it there. Uh, the next one I'm going to do is the ultimate lip action. This, this one again, uh, very, very subtle. I don't like the look of fake lips. I'm just going to paint this on at 100% opacity with a smaller brush. And the difference here is very, very, very subtle. Uh, I haven't added any color to this. I don't want to, um, again, generally when you try to change the lip color, it does begin to look a little bit fake. So I'm going to turn this off and turn it back on. You can see it's just a little boost of color. Uh, you, you can go in and you can adjust the hue a little bit. There we go. So very, very, very subtle change. That's all we want though. We don't want it to look fake. And then the last thing uh, really for, for details is the ultimate sharpening action. I'll use this action on uh, jewelry or rings, anything, but I especially like to add a little bit of extra sharpening uh, to the eye all over in general. So, and this, uh, if you run this as a run the gamut, it actually goes back to the base background layer where there was no smoothing at all. So you're still going to get that. And uh, again, she's not wearing any, any jewelry, but that really just adds a little bit of a pop to the eyes. There we go, nice and close. So just a little bit of sharpening. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I have the Ultimate Warming Cooling. So I'm just going to pop this folder open and I actually don't really feel like I need a whole lot of uh, warming or cooling to this image. So uh, they've got, they're put in the same folder and they're, they're masked off. So if you wanted to warm up the image a little bit or, or just skin tones, you can either, you can either invert the, the layer and, and add warming kind of everywhere. Or again, you can mask off just the areas that you'd like. So again, I feel this image is actually already pretty warm, but just to see the difference that it makes there. We'll do that. I'm actually going to turn that off. Uh, cooling might actually be the best option for this image uh, because it is kind of a fashion image. I'm just going to apply it to the whole image and drop the opacity a little bit further. Again, each layer can uh, be adjusted individually. So there we go. That's what we've got there. So that's uh, each one of the actions. Uh, again, they can be played individually or all together. And uh, if you have any questions about these actions, please don't hesitate to contact us. And we hope you enjoy. Thank you very much.